Hey guys, a uh, lot of crazy stuff's been going on in the world, and I think it's worth making a video about it. I was thinking for a while about not talking about, you know, prepping for unemployment or prepping for job layoffs or just, you know, a lot of people are unemployed right now in, in the States, especially uh, because of everything going on with the virus. And I thought, let's just talk about some of the items that you should be doing, or if you haven't already, uh, hopefully getting started to make sure that if hard times do come that you're prepared for them. Cause I, I've had it happen to me where I've been laid off and luckily I, I was prepared for it and I was able to, um, you know, make sure that I was in a decent position and my life didn't crumble apart because it can, uh, at times, you know, money is something that gives you options. And when you don't have any more options coming in and you don't have any options in the bank and you don't have any passive options, you're left with no options. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to maybe prep for unfortunate times. I'd like to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've been partnering up with Dev Mountain for a couple of years now, and I've had the chance to see multiple campuses and housing. I've been really impressed. Dev Mountain has a couple different programs from web dev to iOS development, software QA, and UX design. Some are after hours part time programs, and some are fully immersive programs where they actually include housing at no additional cost so you can get up and go. If you're interested in finding out more, there's a link in the description below. So I think I should start this video off by not saying, like, I'm not trying to scare anybody and be like, ah, oh, the world's on fire. The world kind of is on fire in weird ways, but like, <laughs> in the sense of. Like the sky is falling, we all are going to be unemployed and homeless and crackheads and all that sort of stuff. That's not really my intent. My intent is to get people to start thinking about these things to be prepared for the worst. So I have been laid off before. I've made a video about that. And um, luckily I was given severance and for about two and a half months, uh, which was nice of them so and appreciated. And, um, you know, it, it helped soften the blow. But I have always kept some resources to the side for that exact circumstance because you have to understand uh, most companies you work with are you're going to be an at-will employer there's usually not at least in the states there's not really any protections for an employee and you'd be prepared for that right like the average american can't afford a 700 hundred dollar bill like 75 percent of people something like that some some statistics that's shockingly um scary in, in my eyes and so um i you know, I don't want you to be in that position because that just leaves you with no options. And then what little you have built up, you'll lose it very quickly. And then before you know it, you're, you have credit card debt that you're, you know, you owe money for, for years and you end up paying more than you, you have and all that sort of stuff. So what I'd like for you to do is just, you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. So, um, right now, like the typical stuff that you should be doing is beefing up your rainy day fund making sure you have, you know, if, if all you have is one month deposit, double it, make it that your goal, double your, whatever your, your rainy day fund is, if it's not at a year, you know, which might be extreme and it doesn't necessarily all have to be in cash. Right. But like, if you don't have my, my rule of thumb is three months cash on hand and then investments on the side to make up the next nine months. Right. So like, if my cost of living is like $3,000 a month, I'd have $9,000 cash in the bank for that specific thing. And you could put that in like a high interest savings account, which right now is not very high. It's like less than 1%, <laughs> but in the past it's been a little bit higher and um, do that. But it's not really there to make you money. It's there to provide um, comfort for your ment for, for It's there to alleviate stress. If the worst case scenario happens, uh, another thing you do is lower your cost of living. Um, there's limits to this, right? So like one thing people try to do is they just try to keep their cost of living very low when they don't have a lot of money. And there's limits to that because you have to have rent or mortgage or food or, you know, you have kids. So you have to get stuff for them and all that stuff. All that there's there's sort of a finite amount of what you can cut money from. At some point, you have to make more money to make up for it, right? And it's really hard. Part of the reason that people can't go and, um, you know, pay a five or six hundred dollar bill is because they simply don't really make enough money, and you have to figure out how to make more money. And you know, 
right now, if I was in that situation, um, I would go and I do all the Ubers and the Lyfts and the Grubhub and, you know, Uber Eats, all that sort of stuff as much as I can. It's going to be tiring and exhausting, but that'd be where I would be at. Hopefully, uh, for those of you who are aspiring software engineers that you're, you're doing quite well and, and, um, <laughs> sorry, I should have read that. And, um, you are, you at least are in a position where if you were to lower your cost of living, you could go and increase. And so a lot of these things that you can do to, to make it so that's easier for you is by eliminating debt and, um, you know, buying things cash and all that sort of stuff. And, um, if you have a room in your house, renting it out, even if it's just temporary. So these are all things that I did when I was laid off and I was looking for a job. The first thing I did was I rented out two rooms in my house, even though I had that rainy day fund, because I wanted it to last longer. And I don't really, you know, just because you have a rainy day fund, you don't want to let it eat away. Um, so the other item that you should do. So like the very practical money aspects that hopefully you'll do is just other than just being prepared financially be prepared mentally and understand what understand that a lot of times it's not you i got i remember getting laid off and i remember being depressed um and uh you know part of my identity for better or worse is that i'm a software engineer i build courses on software engineering i work as a software engineer i have a facebook group on software engineering an email list for software for engineers, I have a Facebook group. Uh, I build courses, podcasts, like everything I do. I'm currently consulting for three, maybe soon to be four different courses on software engineering. Like it's a very large aspect of, of my life and it's sometimes too much. And so when that happened to me, uh, there was a bit of a, um, a bit of a uh, mental item going on where I was questioning my value, even though it just had nothing to do with me, laid off the whole team and it's just, they didn't want to spend the money. It's even if you logically tell yourself, sometimes you just need to mentally prepare for that. So be prepared for that and be prepared in a traditional sense as well. Your LinkedIn looks good. Your resume looks good. All that, you know, um, I probably get three or four invites on a, on a weekday from recruiters for most roles. I'm that are worse than my current role. And I'm just not interested. I'm pretty happy where I'm at. Do you know what I don't do? I don't ever decline them. I accept them. And then they, you know, if they follow up with me, I say, you know, I just wanted to connect for the future. And so when I was looking for roles, I did, I posted in um, LinkedIn, Hey, uh, this is my qualifications. I'm on the market, blah, blah, blah. I, I had a job shortly after. Um, now, make those connections, keep your resume up to date, keep your LinkedIn up to date. And part of the reason I always say keep your LinkedIn and resume up to date is sometimes you do really cool stuff at work that you forget about that might impress potential developers who are going to see your resume. And, you know, I've done a lot of cool stuff with like Yup schemas and the Yup library for schema validation and, mod and model uh, validation that I think is really neat and stuff I'd like to carry over to other projects or integrating a spell checker into the build pipeline and, and things like this and code format or to auto format before PR is raised. And these little things that, that are just sort of nice little quality of life things, but I think they're, they, they're cool. And sometimes updating, adding those sort of bullet points of how you've, you say, Oh, I did quality control. I implemented quality control, but how, right. And putting those on there while it's fresh and new, sort of always having an up to date resume. It's been a, something I think all of us should do. And really just have that template, that resume template, that cover letter template, updated GitHub, updated LinkedIn. Just make sure you're on top of it consistently, especially right now when, you know, if, if that happens, you know, you're going to, you have to figure it out, right? And I mean, Airbnb is one of, like take Airbnb. They're in one of the hardest hit industries. So um, Airbnb is massive. It's, it's one of those start, it's one of those startups that are, changed an actual industry um similar to like uber or similar to like lyft it changed an industry where it's just hotels now people are renting out their houses and um they they just happen to be hit in a very hard industry it's not because they have a bad business model it's not because the fourth of their staff wasn't delivering it was simply because they were in an industry that just got demolished based off what's going on in the world and that they actually are running a very good business. I, I mean, I don't know anybody who is 
doesn't like Airbnb or doesn't use it. That's of my generation, right? Maybe my parents uh, don't use it, but um, 40 and under, um, you know, it's all, it's all about Airbnb. And so you never know what's going to happen. You want to be prepared for that. And when risk is up high, you want to account for that. So, you know, there's certain things I wouldn't do right now. Like I wouldn't go and jump jobs unless the reward was slightly higher than it would normally be where there's a sign on bonus that would, if they changed their mind, I still kept a sign on bonus or, um, you know, relocation that was mandatory and all these sorts of things. And, um, you'd have to weigh that risk and reward. And right now, if you're looking to jump jobs, I think the reward needs to be slightly higher. There is a bit of security that comes along with an employer that already is, knows you and knows the value you bring to the team. You don't have to go and reprove it. Right. Um, just like every other relationship, there's a bit of trust there. Um, but at the same time, you have to protect yourself in the sense of like, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. And, this is a fantastic time to realize that and then start something to protect yourself against that. It's very hard to make a dollar online, but it's not impossible, right? So you could start a, a website blog that maybe you do ad, ad revenue and you know start building these, um, these skills of how to make money online. And I think what there's a couple things I'm hoping that's going to happen from this um, pandemic, a silver lining of sorts. Um, one is I hope, I hope businesses start to value remote work a lot more and understand like, oh, we just had our employees be remote and our business still ran. And so it's not as much of a, um, much of a scary issue. It's going to become more normalized. I hope that happens. I think, I think to a degree it will. Um, and two, I'm hoping that people start to understand how, how scary it is to have all your eggs in one basket. And, I, and you don't have to go and be a workaholic like me, right? I, I work way too much. Um, <laughs> I, I work my job and then I work about 40 hours a week on other things. You don't need to be like me. And in fact, I encourage you not to be. But you could work an extra 10 or 15 hours. <laughs> and and I think you would, uh, you know, just stop yourself from being all in. I don't think you should be all in on anything in life. Um, and especially with um, having your having your your livelihood come from a single location that's very scary especially if you're single like me right I don't I don't have somebody who um, I am dating but I, we're not at that stage right so it's like I don't have anybody in my life where if I got unemployed and I didn't have any money the closest family member I have is 3,000 miles away right and I'm a grown man I'm 32 years old if bad stuff happens, I need to be able to take care of it. And so, so should you, right? Uh, there is no, there is no plan B, right? There is no like, Oh, okay. I guess I'll just, everything will work out and go back home. No, there's no room for me. You know, my mother literally doesn't have a room I could stay in. My father doesn't have a room I can stay in. They're, they're all living their lives and that's okay. And, that's part of the reason I, I work on these things. I, I, I am plan A. I am plan B, C, and D. And so my hope is that for that second point, that people are starting to have plan Bs. And just instead of always trying to follow the happy path, right? Like in, in code, they tell you to, yeah, you want to follow the happy path. But you start thinking about the unhappy paths that are still likely but less probable. So I, I'm, those are the two things I'm hoping from all this that, that happens in terms of the industry. There's a lot of like, Oh, I hope people are healthier. I hope people are, you know, cleaner and sanitary and all that. That's not, that's, that's a separate topic. I'm talking about from our industry perspective and from a, a corporate America perspective that you start having plan B's and being prepared for it. So with all that being said, guys, I wish you the best. I hope you're doing okay. It's a little bit crazy out there. If you're interested in any of my courses, one of my plan B's, there are links in the description below so it can help you prep for those front-end interviews and whiteboard challenges. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all that stuff. I'm on that hashtag road to 100,000. Try and get that silver play button. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 front-end interview questions challenge to make sure that you ace those front-end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.